in the tank. Fish have a feeding frenzy. Tiny darty fish eats the food. Fat fish, full of food, continues to eat more. While other fish are afraid, afraid to go near the psychotic top fish. What do you say, little fish? I just want to live. I don't want to die. I just want to be a fish. Damn my territory. to check ACs, you usually want the temperature to be a little bit higher, but sometimes the cold front sneaks in and now it's 30 some degrees, but it's supposed to warm up a little bit. I'm supposed to go out there, you know, just after nine o'clock. So hopefully it'll be a little bit closer to the right temperature. Uh, this is my truck guys, the GMC Sierra. That's a great look at it, I know. So in the back of the truck, I have a whole bunch of tools there my ladder and stuff, and I've sectioned it off in a real modular way so I could take it on and off. Because while I don't do a whole bunch of calls, and this is my truck I use personally as well, I wanna make sure I can get my tools on there quickly. So I have them into different categories, I put them together, and I'm gonna kinda of show you that real quick. I have some parts here. Now I don't have a whole lot of stuff in here. There's some capacitors, contacted relays, things like that. And of course I have my uh, overflow complete with adapted Malco there. Looks like I'm out of time too, let's see. Nope, I got four minutes left till I leave. Have a little knee pad there. No longer have Reflectix, so. Little container there for the gas. And just each set of tools, they're in the containers. There's some coil cleaning supplies and the hose and stuff over there. And so the farm is awake. Not much of a farm. Ducks and chickens you can't really see. There's one chicken outside. But I'm about to take off, take the kids to school, take the Jackson to preschool, the Jackson, and then go take a look at AC unit. So I'm heading over to this house. We're gonna be checking out a 15 sear heat pump package unit that I put in. We're doing kind of a combination between a maintenance visit even though it's a little chilly, and a service call. They said, uh, or he said Terry, which would've been my brother, came out last year, took a look at the unit and said the high pressure switch was bad and needed to be replaced. But I don't know if that means it wasn't going off or it was tripping early. I think it meant it was tripping early, but I know on these Goodman package units slash Amana, that they'll actually have some wiring issues at the high pressure switch where you might hit it and it'd be loose. So we're gonna check that. We can we can order a new pressure switch. It is under warranty, so we can get a new pressure switch for it. Maybe even do a pinch off and rebraze or something like that. But uh, that won't be today. But stick around, we'll see what goes on. This is the unit we're working on. It's an APH 15, 32 and a half ton, 15 seer Amana. Built in 2013. It's hard to believe it's gonna be 10 years here in a couple years. So the top needs a little bit of love. And the top of the hood needs a little love too. So we're gonna go ahead and get started checking this stuff with the power off. Because I'm a heavy hitter influencer on the internet, Skill sent me a couple tools, which is really cool. So I'm gonna give it a try here. It's a little bit bigger than my rigid, but I figured I'd take it to work. And I chose a drill over at Impact because I wanna be able to drill holes and things for testing. So there's just a look at that guys and I'll let you know what I think a little bit later. I think these bits are awesome. All right, so let's shut off the breaker and make sure we have no power after that. Good there. I'll check them both the ground. We should be good. You can see in there on the contactor, I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but you got your first little signs of pitting and arcing and stuff. Not, I don't think we're at the point of changing it out just yet, but we'll monitor it and maybe change it out over the next couple of years. If you see down there, there's a high pressure switch is disconnected. I'm not sure why it's disconnected. Let's see if it's open and then we can go from there. So I built this, uh, these didgeridoos right here, which is uh, Scottish for my sheep are missing. And I'm gonna plug them into the high pressure switch back there so I can run the cables outside of the cabinet to check the pressure switch. 
And while the unit is running, since it's disconnected, I can see how the pressure switch reacts while it's running. So if it goes off prematurely, thanks to these things, I will know. I have my meter leads on and we are 220 plus kilo ohms and growing. So let me see if I can reach in there without messing up the whole thing here. Goodman makes this real easy. Oh yeah, it's trashed. All right, the sucker's done. No need to test it while it's running, it's already open. Get all that junk off here, they come back here with the vacuum cleaner. I guess I'm gonna take the top off to get to that part. Brush down the condenser coil. It's actually really, really nice. I'm just gonna brush it down. Go through the whole area, you can see around the corner. But go ahead and make the rounds here. Looking at the evaporator coil, it's really clean. I brushed it off too. We have up top a freeze switch and a dryer. I added the freeze switch. I'm just, I'm just a great guy who does that sort of thing. TXV, you see in this uh, nut on the bottom of it, kind of lets you know that it has adjustable superheat. So if you ever have a superheat and subcooling that are out of whack, like both of them are too low or both of them too high, you can adjust this to kind of bring it into order, as long as you have those sort of parameters. A little bit of sweating down here, causing an issue. I don't know if I'll be able to, probably a way to solve that. What do you guys think? How would you solve that? I chuck a probe down there, looks like no water. I'm trying to see. A little bit of junk in here, standard fare. Maybe wipe it down, wipe off the top, but can't wipe the paint back onto it. Gotta get a new top. There's our bulb, insulated. It looks like I did that. That looks like my caliber will work. I've got to start doing more of those product placement shots that are really popular on YouTube. Let me, let me give them a try. Inside the unit where the snakes and ticks live, where Zach meets his skin as he brushes a pile. All right, look at that. We jump in the leaves, it's fall. It's fall, everybody. Jump in the leaves. Good tip after you put a this back in here, we call we call this this. Spin it, make sure you're not hitting anything, just to make sure you don't have a surprise when you start the unit back up. That'd be bad. That's what we call bad in the trade. Hey guys, it's your buddy Zach here. This is our Goodman public service announcement. Goodman screws need to be replaced every 24 hours because they route out and destroy the hole and enlarge the hole. Eventually you'll have screws roughly the size of our moon trying to get into the hole or you'll be wrapping Romex around them or whatever you do. But remember, update your Goodman screws every 24 hours. We have the blower increasing. Hopefully I have a compressor come out of delay here in just a minute. I think it's built into one of these boards. Not positive, can't remember. My brain's atrophy. Defrost controller, blower controller. You see we have a ECM motor, probably General Electric 2.3. So we'll just give it a minute, see if it starts up. It's about 62 degrees outside, about 68 inside, so we're in uh, not exactly prime testing territory, but we'll give it a shot. It is relatively quiet. Let it run for a few minutes. Let's see what kind of temperatures we have. I got to use my phone to do that. I need to get a separate camera. What am I doing? I used to do this well. What happened? Running too hot because our vinyl load amps is 14. So 
judging from the total minus what we've already measured, it's fine. So we're gonna give it about five or 10 minutes here and we'll see where she's at as far as the temperatures on the probes. Perfect. Huh. Okay, so it's 64 inside and our suction line is 51 degrees, I wanna say, without seeing the picture right in front of me. That means if we had 64 and we have a 30 degree delta, which is a high efficiency machine, so the delta between the air temperature and the evaporator temperature ought to be about 30 degrees. So that would put it down at 34 degrees, which is right above freezing, which you know, we're getting closer to the danger zone, obviously. So good thing we had that free stat, right? So we have 34 degrees, 51 degrees, we have about 17 degrees of superheat, which isn't bad. We're not really in test conditions, but it fall in parameters. So we can take a look at those pressures now and see what kind of pressures we can kind of assume we have and how we're doing on that end. We're gonna take a quick delta across the condenser as well to compare. I let it sit up there, just brought them in, or just brought them out from inside to let them get to the point where they are reading true, and then we'll take a look at it. Now we're looking at this probe and it's uh, about 14, between 14 and 15 delta, and I would expect between 15 and 20 degrees of a delta T, so we're right in there on the lower cusp, and I'm guessing if we get in a few more minutes, it would continue to go up as the uh, probes adjust. It's been about Probably about five minutes of sitting in that airstream. So it should be pretty much well adjusted, but there might be a little bit more temperature on the high end. So, looks pretty good overall. Non-invasive testing, a massive success, I guess. And the unit looks pretty good. We have a couple of repairs to make. We have to change that top out, change the hood top out, and hopefully pinch off and rebrace a high pressure switch. If not, recover and brace in a high pressure switch. Either way. So I'll take you guys along for the ride when that time comes.